Hey yo, how's it going? Entropy here today with another video. Today we're going to be doing another pro or con segment right one day right before the PG Sentinel update hits uh, the JP server. Um, and so let's just talk about it for the global players here. I think this is going to be valuable insight looking into, you know, two or three months into the future. And this is something that's going to change for our uh, metagame as well. But let's look at like, what is the change? Uh, first and foremost. So first things first, the text, the, the requirements for um, activating the PG Sentinels, the Perfect Guard Sentinels, have changed. So previously, um, it was either if you were going to be dealt your sixth damage or if you're going to be dealt to, uh, up to your fifth damage, uh, one damage away from lethal um, due to, you know, critical effects, then your PG would proc um, and protect you automatically from the attack. Now the new condition is that you will only guard lethal attacks. What this means is, for example, um, if your opponent's MLB, uh, you know, uses its skill that has two crits, uh, and you're at three damage, uh, before your PG would activate, and then you would take no damage from that attack. Now, because it pushes you to five and not a lethal attack, it will deal two damage. You will be put to five, but you uh, and your PG will not proc. So, in some cases, you might think of this as a buff, in some cases, you will see this as a nerf. Um, so let's discuss the implications, the pros and cons of this change. Uh, in terms of keywords, um, the most recent keyword that came out of, um, you know, set 5 was Limit Break, and uh, the new keyword that will be coming to set 9 is Break Ride. Uh, there is also, you know, Ultimate Break, which is basically, you know, an Ultimate Limit Break, you know, that activates when you're at five damage, but um, the general idea is that you have to be at a certain damage threshold to activate these skills, right? And what players, um, you know, learned to do was, you know, you play your MLB, you play your Perfect Riser. Not only was it or good enough, right? You know, pulling out PGs every single turn, exhausting your opponent's re uh, resources, but it also meant that you could damage deny your opponent at three. Uh, now, for current limit break decks and ultimate break decks. You know, you can play around it uh, by using self-damages, right? Like, you know, the grade 1 6k or the grade 2 8k that puts yourself, you know, one damage behind during your main phase and then returns a, tra uh, a damage back into your deck and then shuffles. Uh, but you can't really do that for break rides because break rides activate on the ride phase, right? And you can't call out regards and set, up, set yourself up to be 4 damage or 5 damage during your ride phase. So what game studio and bushy basically did was made break rides viable and made limit break decks more viable because now you know your opponent can't damage deny you you can now use your limit break more uh, consistently uh, easier and you know you could you could say like clans like norikami um you know that don't really find these self damages optimal will have a much better time uh, moving forward into the future um, another thing, obvious thing, is, you know, the trigger mix, right? Like, with uh, crits not going to, uh, you know, activate your opponent's PGs, uh, you know, the ability to put your opponent at 5 is higher. Uh, what this means is that it completely changes, you know, trigger theory. Um, if you've seen the video previously, I talked about how, you know, crits had the downside of activating PGs. So, you know, the chance of just killing your opponent, you know, lucky shot, KO... Um, is actually not as effective as it sounds. You know, stand, you know, your opponent will be, um, you will have to hit over damage thresholds, but, um, and heals is just really effective because, well, uh, you know, you're healing one damage, right? But if you think about it, like, okay, now, so now crits can actually trigger its entirety of its effect uh, more consistently because now, well, you have to be putting your opponent at six uh, to, um, proc the PG and nullify your, tr uh, your crit, uh, you know, that means, you know, having that extra crit trigger pushing your opponent to 5 is much more valuable, um, and if your opponent's at 5 because, you know, you play MLB or Perfect Riser that has crit pressure, your strand triggers on your next turn, following the turn, because your opponent's at 5 already, uh, your strand triggers are actually more effective because they don't have to, um, the numbers don't have to hit over a defensive number because, you know, your opponent's already at 5, right? So, there is a lot of things to consider um, again like looking into set six something that you could consider is playing chariots uh, with stand triggers because chariots itself has 
an extra crit under certain circumstances when you have three of, of um, its own chariot inside the soul. So you could apply a lot more crit pressure um, and you know just pressure in general with crits and stands in the future. Now let's look at into the, um, the indirectly buffed cards. You know, other than keywords, what cards actually got supported because of this Sentinel change? First, first card that came to mind was um, Silent Tom. Silent Tom, you know, negates your opponent's Sentinels and usually you use it as a fifth damage uh, last attack. So uh, the reason why I think that this card got indirectly buffed is because, well, before uh, you know, Sukiyomi had a hard time putting your opponent to 5 and then using Silent Tom, but now with, you know, the ease of, you know, the triggers and the conditions on the PG, you could play around with crits and uh, Silent Tom, you know, blocking PGs, well, your opponent's PGs uh, will trigger less often, right, because your opponent has to be, you know, at lethal damage to trigger, so that means, you know, your opponent will be clogged with more PGs and the Silent Tom is actually more effective. At doing its job right now the next thing you know it's not a limit break four card it's not a limit break five card but no life king death anchor definitely got buffed its card skill requires the player to be at five damage and because it's easier to be at five damage now it means you can actually uh fulfill its conditions easier and so it got indirectly buffed it's pretty straightforward um then we have um Aphrodite on the bottom right. Aphrodite is an angel feather card. I do not believe it's released in global yet, but it will be released soon. Um, its skill is, you know, at the damage zone. You can flip itself over and give your Vanguard plus 3k. Uh, and I mean, in general, angel feathers did get indirectly buffed because of this change. It's easier to go at higher damage levels, and which means you have more resources to play with. You know, if you use your non seals, you get to trade. Uh, you have more options in terms of trading cards from the damage zone in hand uh, and this card just means you know a higher chance of this card being at the damage zone and so you can actually use this card more frequently uh, whether you choose to put that card in your deck is you know a choice but it did in my opinion get indirectly buffed uh, the last thing that the last card you know that I, I think was worth mentioning is commander laurel now Commander Laurel is an interesting card because it requires your Vanguard to hit, and then you rest four rearguards or four units, and then your Vanguard gets to stand again. Correct? Well, previously it was hard to you know actually use Commander Laurel effectively because your Dimension Police Vanguard, you know whether it's Ending Man or Dayusha, uh, generally has an extra crit on it, which means it generally does not hit because it procs your opponent's PG, and even if it does hit. Uh, your opponent will have, you know, two levels of defensive, uh, you know, uh, triggers, right? So, like, either at least plus 10k, and at most plus 20k, which means your, you know, your Vanguard can't really hit without a boost. Now, regardless of that defensive factor, with um, the fact that your opponent's uh, PG have to activate on lethal damage, uh, you know, your, your two crit Vanguard could actually hit your opponent to five, um, and then still stand, and you can still get, you know, your drive checks and whatnot so yes it did get indirectly buffed um and uh, with it you know already improved stat line compared to the uh, original tcg i think uh, moving forward um, especially with cards like um die kaiser um, and other interesting dimension police cards it will uh definitely be much more viable so after talking about these indirectly buffed cards i also had to think of, think about like you know well, we talked about the pros, right? Let, let, I have to think about the cons as well, right? Like, um, what cards got indirectly nerfed? Well, I really couldn't settle on particular instances. Um, but what I can say is that I believe that the removal of crit pressure damage to null is like the most uh, indirectly nerfed, um, you know, strategy. It isn't just, you know, cards, right? Like MLB. I think is a prime example and a better example than cards like perfect riser because mlb you know you know later into the game once you have the skill you scooped up the two uh blaster blade and blaster darks it becomes a 12k passively right it doesn't it isn't a 22 which means it usually has to attack first um and what that means is you know with the removal of the crit pressure if it attack first and even if it connects your opponent still gets at minimum 10 plus 10k 
on Vanguard and at maximum plus 20k on Vanguard, right? Which means uh, the MLB player's rearguard columns have a much more difficult time hitting um, and dealing the 6th damage and proccing that, you know, PG. Um, on the other hand, Perfect Riser gets less affected be because um, it's generally going to be 23k, 26k um, in order to get that extra crit uh, pressure and that means that it can be the uh, the card that attacks when your opponent's at 4 or 5 um, you know, the last attack on your board because of its high stat line and so, you know, compared to MLB, MLB definitely is more indirectly nerfed than Perfect Riser. Another card that we talked about, uh, Chariot uh, you know, as uh, a, a rear guard that has crit, um, you know, like if it attacks again, it's about like building the columns in the battle phase and making every single attack count, right? Because generally speaking, every clan only gets three attack. Uh, that is the case for dark rollers for now. And like for example, if your chariot has an extra crit, it attacks. Well, then your opponent gets minimum plus ten and then maximum plus twenty, and so that means your you know other columns like your other rages and you know maybe another chariot um, have a much difficult uh, harder time to uh, go through and uh, removing that crit pressure means that you know darker regulars will have a harder time uh, sealing the game once your opponent hits four or five so overall what does this mean um, to sum up I think this will push uh, Vanguard Zero into a more aggressive late game gameplay uh, because it's just you know more often that or not uh, than now that you will be at you know more than three damage right you will be at four or five um in terms of the vp farming meta i guess i have to bring this up as well it will improve it because now you can just deal more damage easily easier um so you will get you know that extra five thousand v five thousand no five hundred vp for each extra damage so you know if you were at if your opponent were at three and you were playing a crit deck um you know, generally your opponent would PG it in an actual game, uh, but now your damage will still pass, and even if you lose, you'll still get that uh, sweet 2.5k VP, which is pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, next is, you know, just greater viability of Limit Break cards, not just Break Ride, right? Like Limit Break 4, Limit Break 5 cards, because it's just how easier to get into these late game conditions, you know, your Easel can trigger better, or your Vermilion can trigger faster into or earlier into the game. Um, and this will definitely help out these clans because of the damage deny and, you know, the general stigma towards them. And lastly, um, with Game Studio and Bushiroad willing to make changes to PGs to supplement uh, further key uh, future keywords, uh, it does, you know, bring up the interesting question of, you know, what they will do with Quintet Walls. And uh, if you're not familiar with Quintet Walls, it is a different type of Sentinel. Um, and you can look into the keywords video if you're interested, but uh, this type of sentinel got introduced midway through the uh, break ride era um, as an alternate method of you know perfect guarding. Um, while it wasn't really well received in TCG, um, you know it's really hard to imagine how they would design it in Vanguard Zero. So the question of you know are they going to bring it in to Zero was you know a big question mark for me. But seeing how much effort they're willing to to do to uh, complement. Um, you know, what will be coming out soon. Um, I do believe there is a chance that we'll be seeing something really interesting um, and will definitely shift up the uh, the game uh, deck building and gameplay in the future. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please, you know, subscribe, like, and comment, and share, and, like, do all that stuff. Uh, I'm just, you know, we're one day away from set 9 meta. Uh, so I'll definitely start churning more of these, like, you know, um, future uh, content um, after post set 9. You know, stuff like talking about, like, reverses or future cross rides. Um, so definitely be on the checkout for that kind of stuff. Um, and, just, you know, just the last word, it's like, um, it's been two, two months, almost three months since I started this uh, channel. And we've seen a lot of growth lately, um, and you know that that's that's one thing. But I just you know I really appreciate the people that leave comments. You know whether it's just asking for advice, um, or you know showing appreciation or giving me you know giving me some feedback on like how to improve. Uh, I I really you know appreciate all of that. Right, like it's it's really 
good encouragement and it make it gives me the motivation to keep making these videos um but anyways i hope uh you know you all look forward to what is to come um tell me what other cards you think will be directly or indirectly uh, buffed or nerfed um and uh let's let's see what happens in this you know new break ride era uh i'll see you guys soon bye